Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, excited to have a new little toy for the shop. I uh, recently picked up this really nice Wilton 8-inch bullet vise. This is, to my knowledge, the largest bullet vise that, that Wilton made. I'm a big fan of the Wilton bullet vices. They've just always been my favorite kind of vise. I've got one that I restored many years ago that I use on my bench over here. I think it's a 4-inch version. This is the eight inch version, eight inch jaws. This thing is massive. It weighs, I think, 200, 250 pounds, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, it is big, it is heavy, and it is indestructible. Ah, mostly indestructible. And the one I picked up here, while cosmetically it doesn't look that great, uh, mechanically it appears to be in excellent condition. Uh, this vise, it still has a lot of the original paint on it, but unfortunately uh, the person I got it from, he told me he got it at an auction and it had set outside for a while. I think it was a military auction and it had set outside in the weather for a little while. So we got some rust issues, but nothing real bad. Everything appears to be surface rust. When I'm looking at the jaws, uh, there's hardly any wear in them at all, which tells me this, this uh, vice saw very little use. The handle's not bent. I don't see any, you know, major hammer marks where it's been beat on or anything like that. So I think it's going to be a really good candidate for doing a restoration on. And that's what we're going to be doing today is uh, starting out, we're going to take this thing apart, uh, get it cleaned up and do a full-blown restoration on it, and it will be going onto my welding bench, and this will be my forever vise. This is the one I have been looking for for a long, long time. These big 8-inch vices are not easy to find, and when you do find them, they uh, demand a pretty premium price, uh, but I was able to get a good deal on this one and glad to have it in the shop. Let's uh, see if we can start taking it apart. I'm going to kind of slide it down here to the end and we're going to start by seeing if we can just unscrew and get the uh, the main jaw off here, main part. Uh, this has just got a screw on the inside that goes up to a nut that's back here in the back and it should just come right out. This thing's going to be heavy though. I think what I might do is uh, here in just a minute we're going to get the gantry crane over here to help support this and pick it up because I'm not sure I want to pick that up by myself. In fact, I think I'll stop right here and we'll get the get a swing on it. We'll put part of it in there. We'll grab the outside of it over here and just hook this with the hook. Right now, I just want to get enough tension on it that it's supporting it. And we'll go ahead and bring this on out. I love how big this opening is. We can grab some really heavy duty stuff with this vise, which is uh, the reason I've been looking for one. Slide that over a little bit more. Put some tension back on it. Continue bringing this on out. All right, it has Quit grabbing there, and there we go. I'm just gonna slide this over here and put it down on the bench. Go ahead and uh, unscrew this. This is a swivel base, and uh, should just have a couple of bolts here that go down into a little framework up underneath the bottom there. That one is off. That one is off. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up off of the, the casting. There we go.
and that all appears to be in very good shape. Sometimes uh, this ring in here will break. This is kind of the weak link on these uh, vices, but uh, that one's in good shape, which is great. Right, I'm gonna set this down. So I'm gonna pull this little clip. There's kind of an E-clip on here that captures this screw in place. There's three um, just Phillips head screws. Use my impact. Those are not in there very tight at all. Pull these out. There's another one on the bottom down here. Pull those out. This should slide up. And now the screw comes right out. Next thing I want to do is take the jaws out. These are uh, replaceable. These are in good shape, but I want to get them out. There's just a couple of socket cap screws in here that hold these in place. And those are a little bit rusty, but they came right, coming right out. Get the second one off the bottom here. Man, that one wants to be a little bit more stubborn. All right, uh, let me get a different impact. All right, we're gonna go to the big impact gun here. And that broke it right loose. And we got that one off. We get this off of the other, the main body as well. All right, we're gonna do the same thing here on the other side, get this uh, jaw out of here. Get my, in there. Here we go, that one's loose. There we go. And that one is out as well. Well guys, I got this apart as far as I think I'm going to take it apart. Now if you really want to get it completely apart, there's a casting on the inside of this that has the screw that the or the nut that the screw goes up and into and to take that out there's a couple of pins on either side this whole back end slides out and all that gut comes out at the same time but honestly there's nothing wrong with it and uh, for the cosmetic restoration that I'm doing. There's just no reason for me to take it apart, so I'm not going to. Uh, all that on the inside has been kept lubed up and it's in great shape. Uh, I've looked up in there with a flashlight and no significant wear really anywhere, so I think we're good to go. So game plan now is, is uh, I'm gonna have my boy that helps me out out here. He's gonna come in with a wire wheel and get these things cleaned up, get all the old paint and rust off of them, and uh, we'll come back and get them repainted and uh, put back together. I'll probably take these jaws and soak those in my Evapo Rust tank rather than wire wheeling those. We'll chemically remove those, but we do need to get this paint off of here. And uh, anyway, I will bring you back once we get everything stripped off. We won't be showing the, uh, the, the, the removal of the rust and paint, but it's just gonna be grunt work. It's just using an angle grinder with the wire wheel uh, to get her done. And it shouldn't take much at all to get these, uh, these parts done. Also get uh, all this over my parts cleaner, get all that grease and stuff cleaned up. And I think we'll be ready to give this thing a fresh coat of paint and reassemble. This is going to be a fairly simple and straightforward restoration. It's really just cosmetic is all we're having to do to it. Uh, nothing major wrong with it at all. All right, we'll bring you back. So my high school boy Brock helped me out and he came in here and wire wheeled these for me yesterday. And this is the next day I'm back out here and we're I'm just gonna wipe these down with some mineral spirits and make sure we get all the dust and everything off of them, just clean them up a little bit. And then we're gonna mask off uh, the areas that need masking and get ready to paint these. So uh, let me get these wiped down and we'll be back in a minute and we'll get them masked up. Now we're gonna start masking off the areas we don't wanna have painted. And I'm just using blue uh, painter's tape here, nothing special. This will just uh, give me a nice mask. And 
and I'll take a razor blade and uh, trim these edges up. I need to get a fresh blade. That one there is looking dull. All right, that's much better. We're ready to paint this. I'm using a Rust-Oleum hammered paint. This is a verde green is the color. It's a real close match to uh, the paint that uh, these came with from the factory. It really makes a nice finish. And um, we're just gonna go ahead and give this thing a good coating here. Go ahead and hit this base while we're at it. All right, I think we'll let this paint cure a little while. I'm gonna flip these parts over and uh, get some of the areas that I can't hit right now with it uh, after it, it gets uh, dry to the touch. But this is coming out nice. I'm gonna really like this vice, I think. So we'll be back. We'll be back after we let this paint cure for a little while. So this is where my five inch Yoast vise has been sitting for some time. This has been my go-to vise now for quite a while. Picked this up and uh, I actually had done a little restoration on it a while back. And this has just been my user vise. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a great little piece here, but time to upgrade. This one, I think I am going to try to sell, but for now, we're just going to move it over out of the way. I've already unbolted it. Let's get that Wilton sitting right here. Let's get it put together. So I got my base, it's all painted. This uh, this ring will go on the inside. We'll have a couple of carriage bolts that come up through this, up into the bottom of the vise. Kind of get these uh, positioned roughly where they go. All right, I'm gonna turn this 90 degrees because that's how I'm gonna put it up on there. This casting, I probably ought to get the gantry crane over here, but I can pick it up and handle it without the other pieces in it. But we'll go ahead and drop that down like such. And now, what I'm going to do is just kind of slide this over just a little bit where I can get my fingers up underneath the bottom here. And we'll get our little nuts here, pulling that up from the bottom. All right, I'm going to turn this 180 degrees. Do the same thing over here. All right.
tape off here that we masked with. And let's get our jaw and get it ready to go in. All right, there's a little key in the bottom of this piece here. And we got to get lined up. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of slide it in there. Pull that out. And I turn this a little bit where we can see what's going on. But next, we got our vice screw here. And we need to go ahead and get it screwed in. The jaws are already pushed up, so we just got to basically screw this up until we get this little collar here. There's a slot that uh, this little piece fits over and captures that in, and that's what connects the, uh, the rod here, the screw, to the actual um, vice movable jaw. So give me a minute to crank this in. All right, so we're up to that little collar there, and there's a little recess that goes into. All right, now we're engaged, and this little piece here fits in place. We have some screws uh, that we screw that in place with. Let me get my screwdriver, and we'll get that tightened up. There we go. Make sure those are all tight. And they are. And that allows that movable jaw to move in and out. So let's go ahead and get these uh, jaws in here. I've got some uh, Brand new socket cap screws we're gonna put in here to replace the old ones. The old ones were just kind of a little rusty. And these just screw in from the back. I'm not gonna tighten that one up all the way until I get them both on there. Make sure they both align, and they do. That one's tight. That one's tight. Same thing on the second jaw here. started. That one started. And there we go. I think she is all together. I'm going to run these up and just make sure those tighten up parallel to one another, they should. If not, we'll have to shim the back of them, but no, they're perfectly fine. And uh, that looks good. So now to bolt this bad boy down. I've got the four holes here, and we're gonna use 5 8 inch bolts to go down through my table. I'm just gonna drill and tap holes directly in here. We got a one inch thick plate. I need to locate the holes, so to do that, I'm using a transfer punch. I've showed these before. These are, uh, a set of uh, punches that are in fractional sizes. This particular set goes from a half inch up to one inch. And um, you just choose the punch that fits whatever hole that you're going through. And this one here happens to be, what is that, 11 sixteenths. And what I'm gonna do is just uh, put that punch in there. It's got a center punch built into the end of it. And that'll locate that uh, center punch hole right in the center of the hole that I need to, to, to match up. So we'll just go ahead and pop that right there. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit all four of them. Make sure it's not moving around any. Looks good. Same thing over here. Now 
here we go. Now I'm gonna uh, push this monster mice out of the way. And I've got four center punches there and I'm just gonna circle them with a Sharpie pen so I can find them real easy here. Now to drill these, what I've got is a mag drill and the way this works is, is this bottom is an electromagnet. So I've actually got it on right now. This is stuck, it's right above that center punch hole that I just did. We've got a drill on here and it's actually got a little drill press handle on the side. So it's basically a little portable drill press that you set up on a piece of metal. It attaches itself to whatever you're drilling to and you use this kind of like an in-place drill bit, drill press. So, uh, that's good. I got a 1764 drill bit in here, which is uh, what you need for 5 8 11. And uh, we're going to drill this out and then tap them. my magnet. We'll uh, clean these chips out of the way and we'll come down here to our second hole. Get our drill bit right over that center punched hole. two holes down, two to go. I'll do these other ones off camera. We got our holes drilled. Next thing I'm gonna do is just come in here and uh, just deburr that and put a little taper going down into the hole. Just make that tap a little easier to start. And I got a 5 8 inch 11 tap here. We'll put some uh, some uh, tapping compound on there, make it cut a little bit better. And let's uh, thread some holes here. Got our holes drilled and tapped. So um, go ahead and get some bolts in here. Get these lined up. and get these all tightened down to the bench. And I think that this vise will be ready to use. There we go. Tighten these up and there we go. One heavy duty vice. I like it. So this five inch vice is big. This uh, eight inch vice is huge. <laughs> wow. They're actually at about the same height. They're really exactly the same height, but uh, got a much larger gripping area there, much heavier vise, heavier duty vise. And uh, I really think this is gonna come in handy for a lot of jobs around here. 
Well, there you go, a Wilton Model 800S bullet vise, machinist vise, the biggest one they make. You can still order these brand spanking new. Uh, you just better have a pocketbook to pay for them. I think this vise costs about four grand if you order a new one. Um, I got a good deal on it. I still paid up for it, uh, but uh, I got a good deal on it, I feel like. And it's a, this is, again, my forever vice. This is something I've always wanted for the shop. Um, I have a need for a big vice occasionally, doing a lot of the work that I do, and this one should fit the bill. And on this big, heavy workbench that I got it on, uh, I think I am set. So I'm real excited to have this in the shop. There you go. Hope you quick enjoyed that little quick uh, restoration. Uh, not a whole lot of mechanical restoration or nothing. It was really just clean it up and paint it. Fortunately, this vice was in pretty good shape when I got it, other than just being a little bit rusty from being outside. Uh, but it's going to make a great user glad to have it in the shop guys that will be a wrap as always thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already a thumbs up and comments are appreciated and we'll catch you on the next video thanks for watching